On this channel, we've gone over a lot of different features of QuickBooks Online and ways to use the different features. But one thing that I realized that I haven't gone over with you guys is really how to manage bills in QuickBooks Online. And one thing I wanted to tell you guys about was that QuickBooks is rolling out a bill pay solution. So they've always had the ability because they've synced up with different vendors. At first they were using bill.com, which is now called Bill. And then they were using Milio, but they were able to in QuickBooks connect to some way to actually pay vendors. But QuickBooks has brought that in house and they have started to roll out a bill pay product where you can put your bills in and then you can actually send payments out to vendors. Instead of having to like write your own checks, mail them yourself, they can produce checks for you or do ACHs and different things. So we're going to do another video on that once it's more widely available because they're rolling it out. And I don't necessarily have all the features to do that on my system right now. But what I want to show you now is how to start getting bills into the system. There's a couple different ways we can bring bills in and the importance of having bills in the system and how we can leverage that to help us manage our business better. So if that is interesting to you. That's what this video is going to be about. We're going to do a screen share here in a second. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, I would love to have you as a subscriber here on the Clara CFO group channel. And just a reminder that if you have comments and questions, put them in the comment section below. And if this video is helpful, please like it because it helps the algorithm understand that it's a helpful video and that um, it will show it to other people who might need to learn this information. So thank you so much for being here and let's go ahead and get into talking about QuickBooks Online and the vendor section and the bills and how to use all of that in QuickBooks. Okay, so here we are in the sample company. You guys have seen this before if you've watched my other tutorial videos. If you haven't watched my other tutorial videos, I have a whole playlist called How to Do Stuff in QuickBooks Online. So you can go and check that out. If you find this video first and you want to learn more about QuickBooks Online, I have a ton of videos over there, so you can check those out. Let's go into finding this expense section. So QuickBooks is kind of separated into vendors and expenses because that's who we pay out. Think of that as being money out and then customers and invoices. That's money coming in. So we're going to spend our time on that money going outside today. And so that is going to be underneath this expense line. So under expenses, we've got bills, vendors, contractors, and then mileage. Remember that you can customize your menus if you want to, but let's just go ahead and click on expenses and see what it shows us here. So under expenses, this is where you can basically find anything that's considered an expense from QuickBooks perspective. So I don't ever really use this view here, but if there is an expense, you can go here and you can change a category. You can edit any transaction. What I do use is pretty often when I'm looking for a transaction, maybe I'm trying to research something is I use this vendor section. So anything that's been coded to a vendor mean you can look it up. So let's say I'm trying to figure out, you know, how many payments have been made to our insurance agency. They will be under here, under the agency, any transaction related to that. I'll show you real quick how things get related to a vendor. You do need to use, when you're in the bank feeds, you do need to make sure that you have a payee selected. So for example, this transaction here, it says a rental that's pulling in from the bank description. But if I don't put a vendor or a customer name here, it won't show up in that vendor section. So you have to, I don't know why a rental is not coming up, but like here, this is a vendor. If I want to do this correctly so I can look up these transactions in the future, I want to make sure that I put in a vendor name. So I want to have, I want that to be named a rental. There we go. I'm going to save that. I'm going to add that just so we can see what that looks like. So let's go over to our expenses and our vendor. And then here's our a rental that we just added. And of course, because I have, because I have a sample company, that transaction is not listed here. But if this was not a sample company, you would see that transaction listed here, but it did create the vendor for us so we can see that. Anyways, that's the downside of having a sample company is it's not fully functional. But I'm keep walking through the expense section here. We've got expenses and then we have bills. This is any bill. This is a review section. We have an unpaid bill section and then we have a paid bill section. So you can go and see all of that. 
We have the vendor lookup that we can do. All of our vendors are listed here with all their transactions. You can also see any open balance you have to your vendor over here. And then with vendors, you can set them up with all of their information in here, addresses, notes. You can even put their ACH numbers in here for payment. You can put the tax ID number and whether or not they need a 1099 because when you pay people, ideally you should be asking them if they are providing services to you or in any kind of way, you should be asking them for a W-9 so you can put their tax information in here and understand if you need to track them for 1099 payments. Most people are not doing that at the beginning of working with somebody, but you should be doing that. Okay, so that is the vendor section. And then you can also, there's a separate contractor section. So this is specifically if you wanna make contractor payments. They This contractor section is kind of new. It used to just be everybody was a vendor and now they have this way that you can specifically pull out contracts and you can pay them. So that's a little bit different, but we're not gonna get into that today, really. If you can add a contractor, you can just add their name and send them an email so they can actually put all their tax ID information and payment information in, and then you could just pay them right away. And then you have all their information for 1099 as well. Where I wanna spend our time today is actually how to add bills into the system. So why do we wanna track bills? We wanna track bills because it'll help us understand what our outstanding liability is to other companies. <laughs> because when we're getting bills in and we're looking at our bank account, we might be thinking, hey, we have tons of money, this is great, it's all good. But you might also have tons of bills that need to be paid and you need to keep track of them and when the due dates are. You don't wanna just pay bills every time, like right when you receive a bill, if you have potentially 30 days to pay a bill. So you wanna have a standard and a process for paying bills when they're due so that you don't make any vendors upset, but you're also not paying out your cash too early. And you have a good clear picture of what does need to go out so that you can manage your cash appropriately. You know, in QuickBooks Online, we have the ability to run an AP aging report, which will show us where our bills are, if we have any really outstanding bills, if we've missed a payment, or maybe um, we just haven't paid somebody because of one reason or another, maybe we didn't get what we wanted, or maybe we're waiting for a customer to pay us before we pay a vendor. All of these things can be reasons that things sit on the accounts payable aging, but we have that report so we can see all the bills that come into the business, how much do we owe? And it's really important to track bills because that you know that unknown liability amount you don't know unless you have some kind of recorded way of like really how much needs to be paid out to you know lots of different people now different businesses are going to have maybe heavier ap versus some businesses are going to have very little ap maybe all of their expenses are just you know recurring credit card transactions and they don't really receive bills but if you are a business that receives bills you do want to be tracking them in some kind of system it gets really hard to manage when you start to have multiple vendors sending you bills multiple vendors sending bills for different amounts with different due dates it can just get really complicated so what you want to do is track it in a system like this i like and i wanted to do this video to tell you guys about this because i like the idea that you can also pay your bills directly directly in QuickBooks Online and just making QuickBooks Online a more fully robust system. And they are going, they're going rolling out pricing that's free to start or free for the first like AC, five ACHs. And then you can send a check for $1.50. They will have some upper tiers of pricing like with permission management and things like that. If you have a little bit more of an, a complicated accounting department and you need to have bill approvals and things like that. But we'll get into that when we have more information about the bill pay system. But if you wanna go ahead and just start to track your bills, this is what you can do here. Okay, so we can get bills into the system in multiple different ways. You can upload from your computer. So if you have a PDF file of a PDF or maybe even a image file of your bill, you can upload it and it will do its best. QuickBooks will do its best to read the information and pre-populate it. And when it does that, it will put it into this review category. You always wanna review when you do an upload, okay? Because <laughs> as much as like machine 
machine learning, AI, all these things, like these technologies are getting better and better and better. Sometimes they're still a little dumb. <laughs> and especially QuickBooks stuff. <laughs> Sorry, QuickBooks. But you always want to have a human eye on these things. Don't just rely on this. You know, it could be a difference of a bill saying $500 or it being pre-populated for $500,000, okay? So make sure you go and you look at this, like make sure the due date's correct, that they put the, the due date in the right place. Make sure that the terms are correct. Just go through and review every single bill that you upload, okay? And once you review it, you can approve it to go into just the unpaid category. So you can upload an actual image or you can just create a bill from scratch. So this is one where you literally can just type in, let's go to a rental since we just did that. We can put in the terms. Maybe we got a bill for net 30. The bill date is today. It's due in net 30. We can type in the bill number and you can use tags if you want to. And then you can put in what this was. So if it was equipment rental for the Smith project for an amount of $150. It could be billable to a client if you wanna make it that. You could put sales tax on there if you want to, and you can put it to a customer if you want. You can also put in like specific details. So if you're trying to get things into inventory, you can put like maybe the bill was for specific inventory items. That's what you would use for that. But if it's just a straight expense, you would put it up here in the category details. And then you would just click save. And then you have a bill that's there and you can, here's our bill that we just created down here. And you can schedule payment here. I just, I'm not gonna step through it for the purposes of this video. There's our bill. Now you can add bills in manually that way. You can also create a recurring bill. So this is really great if you have something like your bookkeeper, for example, and your bookkeeper charges you a flat fee every single month, and you know that it's gonna come in the first of the month, you can type that in to just do bookkeeping. And I think they have, yeah, books by Bessie over here. And this is monthly on the first day of the month. It was start date will be next month and no end date. And the terms, let's say, are due on receipt. And let's put this in here. You guys, my office is so cold that I can barely feel my fingers. <laughs> Uh, I need to talk to my landlord about that, but I'm, if I'm fumbling, that's why. And we're gonna go to, we're gonna say this is monthly bookkeeping. Again, my typing is pretty bad. It's, we're gonna say it's $250 a month and we can save that. Okay, so now we'll have that recurring bill that will show up every single month. And let's say that gets charged to the credit card. If it got charged to the credit card, for example, and it was coming in or even like, set up on auto pay from our from our checking account. If that $250 hits the checking account, it should identify that there's a potential match between that outstanding bill and the charge that came in. And if it doesn't for some reason, what you can do, see if we have a books by Bessie here. So let's say we put this here, if this was $250, we can go to find match and it will give us the options of what we could potentially match it to. So this is another reason to have those bills in there so that you can potentially match credit card charges directly to an outstanding bill as well, credit card or bank. And then let me show you the AP report. So let's do the aging summary, AP agent summary. And this is what it shows where you can say like, what's current, it's due right now, what's over 30 days due, 31 to 60 days due, and then anything that's in 60 or 91 days and above. And so this is a great example of just one of the nice reports that can come out of QuickBooks and it'll help you manage your list of vendors. And you might be like, wow, I didn't realize I had an outstanding PG&E invoice. I need to go and research that. And you could go and look and maybe you did pay it, but it just didn't get matched to the outstanding bill in the system. And then you can go and fix that really easily. But these are things that you wanna keep in mind because this balance right here, this total is gonna be sitting on your balance sheet. So if you run the balance sheet as of January 20th, it will show an accounts payable total of 1752.67, okay? 
So that's kind of how it all works. Do you want me to do a video on bill pay? I'm happy to do that once I get the resources to be able to show you guys how to do it. And yeah, what other questions do you have about vendors, about bills? There are a lot of systems. I will mention things like Dext, which used to be called Receipt Bank and HubDoc that will be able to push a bill in their system, like through a document retention into QuickBooks, and then it'll create a bill. Also bill.com will create a bill directly into QuickBooks. So there are other systems for bill pay or, or document management that can push transactions into QuickBooks Online. So you might be using something like that. So maybe you have an AP aging and you're not manually entering in things directly to expenses here, but you might also be able to, with some of the new features of QuickBooks QuickBooks and the new bill pay, you might not need to use some of these other systems that maybe you've been using. Like if you've been using bill.com, but you're not using some of the more robust features, you might be able to just go ahead and use QuickBooks Online for your bill pay. So, you know, with them taking over additional services, you might just be able to move more of your business processes directly into QuickBooks rather than having another software to pay for. So something to think about, you know, they are trying to level up the value of these tools. You are paying for the accounting system. So they're like bringing out more things for you to be able to do in the system. I think that's it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below and I will see you next time. All right, bye everybody.